Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? I'm trying to get my camera centered here on my way home. Just dropped off Tanya Jean Appelstein. We went to our meeting tonight. And it is a beautiful evening in Indianapolis. It is 68 degrees outside. Beautiful sky. My husband made uh, some noodles tonight for dinner, pasta, and he saved me half of them with butter and salt. I'm so excited. And um, yeah, I had a great day today. I woke up and I was not in the best of moods when I woke up. I woke up and I was like turned the other way and Boo Radley was on Alex's pillow and his butt was like <laughs> my face. And I was like, he was like this far away from me. I was like, Boo Radley, I was like, your butt is in my face. Anyway, I just woke up and I literally just like woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I just was like, <clears throat> the nerve in my back was like really like three inches below my waist was like re really eh, three, mm, two or three inches below my waist. It was really hurting and I just was kind of like, I'm over it. I woke up and I just, I slept way in today. I stayed up super late last night watching The Good Place um, and eating, I guess I got street corn dip. <laughs> I don't know why, but it was really good last night. And I was eating street corn dip and garlic hummus and um, Alex brought me some of these cupcakes home from that bridal shower that he went to. And so I had two of those, they were delicious. Um, I don't know, I just, I wasn't in the greatest of moods this morning when I woke up. I was hurting, my leg was hurting. I just didn't feel like doing anything. And I was like, but I was like real quick, like you have got to get out of this. Like you've got to start your day over. Look at this, this couple out and they're sit he's sitting on the end of the car and she's talking. There's some romance going on out there. But anyway, I just was not in a great mood and I was like, you've got to get out of this. Like you've got to start your day over, you know? So I did. And uh, I was like, I wanna go do this. I went and I did a review video of um, <laughs> the smart food popcorn and I got laughing so hard doing it. I still have some of my coffee left from Starbucks. I did it. I went and got my Starbucks and then I did the review. I got a glass of water too, or a cup of water from there too to do the review with. But that got me laughing and that really put me in a good mood. And then I went home and I did two more videos and um, I talked to a couple friends on the phone before and then I, uh, when I grow up, I wanna be a doctor because of the, I don't understand what that means, but anyway, um, some foundation. I'm reading the billboards. You guys read billboards? I love billboards. But anyway, um, I came home and I filmed my drama video and I filmed my Peterismus video and got those up and uh, yeah, and I wanted to take a shower before I went to my meeting tonight, but I just was like rushed for time and I didn't want to be late picking Tanya up because I was like, what time do you want me to get you? And she's like 7.20 to 7.30 and she's like, but I don't want to be late. And I was like, okay. And I got literally pulled into her house at 7.30, like right on the dot. So uh, we went to our meeting, fantastic. It was such a great meeting tonight. We talked about character defects and talked a lot about just having a daily reprieve, you know, from drinking each day that we wake up and talked about being passionate about our sobriety and, um, well, these were all things I talked about, but just was a great meeting and it was really good to see some people I hadn't seen, you know, in a while. And, um, yeah, it was, a, it was fun. It was nice to see people. And then we took one of my friends home afterwards and um, she made me chocolate chip cookies which are back here somewhere. I don't know where she left them. She said she left them back there, I don't know where. She made Tanya, well she made chocolate chip cookies with raisins and walnuts in them and then just plain chocolate chip cookies and she asked me which ones I wanted and I said the plain ones because Alex wouldn't eat the other ones. And um, she is such a great baker that I knew that he would want one of her cookies. So I was like, I'll just take the one, the regular one. I can't see him. I have a, my hoodie back there. I've learned to keep a hoodie in my car in case I go to one of my friend's house to sit outside and it's cold, like at night. So I have a hoodie that has PP's Pee picture on the front of it that somebody sent me. Uh, I think I actually maybe did that for a sponsorship. Um, I can't remember. I, yeah, I did. It was a long time ago. 
and it was like you can have your pet's picture put on the front of a sweatshirt. I actually like, Alex loves it. He wants one. Um, and I keep on forgetting to um, order him one, but I don't know what that company is called anymore. There's a lot of places out there like that that you can get a hoodie with, um, you know, pictures put on them and stuff like that. So anyway, yeah, I have that back there, but the cookies are back there somewhere too. I don't know where my bag right here gets a zip on. It was a good day. It was actually, I, if I had known, it was a really beautiful day outside. If I had known that it was gonna be so pretty, I would have gotten up earlier and planned to go to the pool. I was gonna go to the pool tomorrow and I just looked and the weather said it's gonna be 40% rain, but then Thursday and Friday, it's supposed to be sunshine. And then Saturday, when Alex and Sarah go to Chicago, he has to work in the morning till like noon, and then like they're gonna go to Chicago, um, and they're gonna see some friends of theirs. Alex is making dinner reservations for some restaurant where they can sit outside. They're gonna, but they're driving up there and coming back. They're just going up there for the day to see some friends of theirs from college. So any from college, both of them. One of them might be from high school too. No, I think she's just from college. So anyway, he's excited about that. And then that's our only plans. And then our anniversary is next week. We're gonna do probably dinner the night of our anniversary. And um, I don't know where yet. And then he's taking the weekend after off. So next week, a week from this weekend, he's off. And um, so we're gonna just hang out like for like those four days. But I looked at the weather and it says it's gonna rain that weekend. We were really wanting to try to go to the pool and stuff, so I hope it doesn't rain that weekend. I always just feel so full of spirit and soul when I leave a meeting. I just feel so good. And um, I don't know, I just feel so blessed and so grateful tonight. I always do when I leave a meeting, but more so tonight, I think. On the way home, we're taking our friend home. She took us like the back way, and so we were on all these country roads. It was so pretty, and there's this place that we passed. And I looked at Tanya and I said, didn't we go there one time, like in the fall? It was like this, um, it's like this little house, and they have a farm, and they sell like honey and pumpkin. We went there and got pumpkins, I remember, and Tanya got like apple uh, cider and like honey, and I think I got like saltwater taffy or fudge or something there. They have like all kinds of stuff. It's like this little house. And they sell like, you know, like a little barn in front of this house and they sell all this stuff inside there from the farm. She's like, yeah, we stopped there one night. I was like, I wanna go there. I wanna go there and get some stuff. Our neighbors went to this Amish farm, like in Carmel, which is on the north side. I should go there and review some stuff. And they got like fried chicken, which of course I couldn't eat. They got like fried chicken, pumpkin pie, they like bought all this stuff, like honey and stuff like that. I should go there and get some stuff and review. That would be a good review for my review video. I love pumpkin pie. Do you guys like pumpkin pie? Oh my God. I love any kind of pie, actually. I'm more of a pie person than I am a cake person. I lo love pumpkin pie. I don't know why that is either. My mom could make a really, really good pecan pie. And I love pecan pie. It's probably my favorite pecan. It's pecan pie with like um, whipped cream and a scoop of ice cream, like vanilla ice cream. It's probably my favorite pie in the world. I also like key lime pie. My mom used to make key lime tarts, which are very similar, but they're like um, they're like smaller. And I love those too. But what else? Um, I love. Of course, I love apple pie. Pies are kind of a staple in the Midwest and in the South, you know? Um, like when you go to somebody's house for dinner, like they'll typically make like apple pie or apple crumble. Like that's pretty, like apple crumble or apple crust, you know, like is, um, or apple crisp, I mean. My mom used to make apple crisp a lot when I was growing up. And she would make raw apple muffins too. Oh my God, I loved them. My grandma could make an apple pie like nobody's business. It was so good. 
Well, I would watch Twin Peaks, and he would go in. What, I can't remember what his name was. I love Twin Peaks, but he would go in and get a piece of. Cher I'm not. A, I'm not a big cherry pie fan. I, isn't that weird? Like I'll eat it. Like if somebody has cherry pie, I'll eat it. I mean, I like it. It's just not my favorite. Um, but he would get a piece of cherry pie and a cup of coffee, a cup of joe, he would say, which I love that. I do love a cup of, after dinner, like, that is so fun. That reminds me of, like, you know, when my mom moved into the condo and I would come here, you know, like, and have dinner with her on a Sunday. And then, um, you know, I would, uh, like, we would have, like, after dinner, like, some, not always, but sometimes, like, a piece of pie, you know, with, like, ice cream. Have you ever had apple pie with, like, slice of cheese on the side? It's really, really good. I know it sounds strange, but it is good. And actually, I had a friend of mine that, uh, now I don't eat pot pies anymore because they have meat in it. I think that Annie's has some pot pies that don't have meat in it, but, um, if you've ever had a pot pie before and you like pot pies, like a chicken pot pie or a turkey pot pie, like, the real, you can get them cheap, you know? Get one and then turn it over on a plate and um, put peanut butter on the bottom of it. Oh my, if you like peanut butter, it is so good, you guys. I thought it sounded so gross when my friend told me about it. My, that was my friend Scotty that passed away last summer. Um, he had told me about that and I did it. I think I only did it like one time and it is so good. I kind of miss like hearty meals like that, you know, like those meals you have when you're growing up, like, when I was growing up, I really hated all of that. But like, the older I got, like a meatloaf or like a roast, I love, I like, I love like a Sunday roast with like carrots and potatoes on the side and stuff like that. You know, like in the roast thing that you put in there. I love that. My mom actually also, when I was growing up, actually also, she used a, a crock pot a lot. Like she'd make uh, chili in the pot, crock pot, but not often. She made chili in the stove a lot, but not often. But she would make like soups or she would put like, uh, oh, ham and beans. Like she would do that a lot, especially in the winter. And um, what else did she do? Um, what's the stuff that my mom loved that she would put in there? The, uh, oh shoot, you make it on New Year's Day. Why can't I think? My mom loved it. It was like one of her favorite things. It's an Irish thing. Oh shoot, why can't I think of it? Um, uh, is it like, not like, it's corned beef? Yes, corned beef, but then um, sauerkraut. Sauerkraut and corned beef, my mom would put in the crock pot. She loved it. My mom would literally eat sauerkraut straight out of a can. She loved sauerkraut so much. I like sauerkraut too. It, you know, I wasn't a person when I was growing up that liked Rubens. Um, like every once in a blue moon, my mom would make Rubens for dinner. And I didn't typically like love Rubens, but I kind of like, as I got older, I liked them more before I was a vegetarian, obviously. Oh, I'll tell you something I hated when I was a kid. But then as I got older, I really, really loved was Sloppy Joe's. My mom, she loved Sloppy Joe's. I don't know why I didn't like them, but I didn't. But you know, like you have those meals as you're growing up and you like take it for granted, you know, like a family dinner sitting down. And then as you get older and you don't have those meals anymore, it's like, God, I miss those meals. It's like family dinners. You know, the only one I really never liked better was like tacos made at home. Whenever I tell people this, they always crack up. They're like, oh my God, I love ta like homemade tacos at home. I'm like, I think they're so gross. I don't like homemade tacos. I would rather have a taco at Taco Bell. I know people are like, tacos at Taco Bell are so gross. I don't think so. I think they're like delish. I love them. You can get them made with beans and be a vegetarian still. That does kind of actually sound good. And I'm right by a Taco Bell, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but I could if I wanted. Don't think I could. Um, yeah, but oh my God, that police officer just turns right into that, into that thing. Anyway, um, all those foods. And then my two favorite, a chicken curry and chicken a la king that my mom made when I was growing up. Chicken curry was like a casserole. Oh, oh I'll tell you what's so funny about this because I talk about this on my drama channel all the time is that my mom made a uh, tuna casserole and I loved it. With rolls and stuff. Do you remember like, uh, I don't know if this is a thing internationally, but in the United States, like when you go to elementary school, 
well, I mean, every grade they do this, but like, I didn't really care in high school and junior high because I usually took my lunch. When I was like in high school and I was like on a really strict diet for a while because I lost a lot of weight before, I think it was before my 10th grade year, I like, for that whole year, I would just take cut up vegetables and eat them because I was like so concerned about my weight. I was like super health conscious. But before that, like in elementary school, my, you know, like you would get the piece of paper. It's probably all online now, but back then you get this piece of paper, you know, that would come out like once a month and it would have like every, like meat, like every day of the week, like what the meal was for that day. Like, so you would know whether you wanted to take your meal or buy your meal. I always bought my meal. I was always like get the card, you know, with the stamp in it. And uh, my mom, she had this cousin. Her name was Sandy. Oh my God. She was my, uh, when she was one of my elementary school, um, what do you call it, uh, lunch ladies. And I can remember, she would always say to me like, now tell your mom, I said, hi, I'm your mom's cousin. And my mom would say to me, she would say, oh, she was like, yeah, we don't, we didn't really hang out with her a whole lot. She was like a cousin by second marriage or something like that. My mom was like, we weren't very close. She would always say that about Sandy. Sandy was always real nice to me. I don't know where Sandy is today, but anyway. Um, but they would have this thing and my mom, she would like joke with joke with me about it, like in front of fam friends and family. It was like this going joke when I was a kid because I would go crazy. Like every time they had this thing and it was called Johnny Marzetti. Oh my God, I was so obsessed with Johnny Marzetti. I loved it. And they would have it like every other week, Johnny Marzetti. Do you guys want to hear the sad story? Okay, I'll tell the sad story before I uh, get off here to go home and have my pasta that my husband made me. Um, and my peanut, or my peanut butter cookies. Oh, I love peanut butter cookies so much. And peanut butter fudge. I love peanut butter fudge. Okay, I love fudge of any kind, honestly. I don't like double, double chocolate fudge, though. But, okay, my favorite day to eat lunch was when you would come into the cafeteria in the fall and it was real cold outside, and it was like that book, The Hundred Dresses. I love that book, The Hundred Dresses. She would say, I have a hundred dresses. You do. A hundred dresses, she'd say. Oh, yes, a hundred dresses. A hundred dresses, she would say. Yes, I have a hundred dresses at home, all lined up in my closet. A hundred dresses? Yes, I have a hundred dresses and a hundred pairs of and matching shoes for all my dresses. A hundred dresses and matching shoes, you don't say. All the girls would make fun of her. And they felt so bad. I can't remember what that girl's name was, but I love the book The Hundred Dresses so much by, uh, what, who was her name? I can't remember. But anyway, it was one of those days where, you know, like it was cold outside and kind of rainy. And it was a fall day. And it was like probably like the beginning of October. It wasn't yet Halloween, but it was getting close towards the end of, you know, maybe towards Halloween a little bit. And you would go in and everybody would have on their flannel shirts, you know, or their book sweaters and everything. And it was like one of those days that the teacher would read you a book after, you know. So first grade, imagine Peter, first grade, okay. Bangs, longer hair, you know, little flannel shirt and like some, you know, corduroy pants and stuff like that. And you come into the lunchroom and um, there's on the table tomato soup because they don't trust you because you're too young to carry the tomato soup because tomato soup you'll get burnt everywhere. So there's a tomato soup with a peanut butter sandwich, which I absolutely love, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but it, I don't know, for some reason, just be a peanut butter sandwich. And then, um, a, uh, then a container of milk and you'd sit down at the table with all your friends right and you would eat the tomato soup that was like one of my favorite days ever was tomato soup because I love tomato soup you'd eat tomato soup and a peanut butter sandwich and I can remember sitting there and I was eating my tomato my tomato soup and I was so excited because I just love tomato soup day so much and uh, I went to go reach for my milk and my friend next to me I still remember his name his name was Brian we weren't friends for long after this. Anyway, I went to reach for my milk and Brian reached for his milk and the mean boy at the table, I remember his name too, and he said, oh, he looked at my friend and he goes, don't drink the milk. And my friend was like, what? And he like put the milk down and uh, the boy was like, yeah, don't drink the milk. And everybody was kind of like looking at him and he said, he goes, see, it says on the side homogenous because it was like homogenous milk, you know? And he said, see, it says homo in it. And if you drink the milk, you become a homo, just like Peter, or just, if you drink the milk, you become a homo. And I took my milk and I started putting it down. And he goes, oh, you don't have to worry about it. You're already a homo, so it's not gonna do anything to you. And from that day on, everybody treated me different. That was the day that my life changed. That day of tomato soup, and fall leaves and reading a book after like my my life changed on that day in first grade forever
I'm not sad. I don't think that he's a mean-hearted person and I don't wish him any harm. And I think he probably didn't know what he was doing at that time in first grade, you know? And it was probably just attention-seeking and he thought he was being funny. But just think about that when we talk about, like, bullying and calling names and things like that, you know? The capacity that this child, who was, what, six at the time, in first grade, would set in motion what would follow me for the next 12 years. Because that was how it started. Every boy after that called me those names, and some girls, too, you know? It forever set in motion the direction of my life after that, you know? And I think about that sometimes that day, that tomato soup day, you know? And I don't eat tomato soup, no, I'm joking, I do. I eat tomato soup today, like it doesn't, like, I don't think that much about it, I, because to be honest with you, like that was just one day, but like there were so many, a hundred times worse things that happened to me while I was being bullied, that like that's the least of them, honestly. But that was the day that kind of started it. Like, do I think it would have started otherwise because I was a feminine kid? Yeah, it would have anyway. I mean, even if he hadn't said it, somebody would have, you know? because I was an effeminate kid, but like that was the day that it started. And then after that, nobody wanted to talk to me. Nobody wanted to sit with me at lunch. I didn't have very many friends. I played with the girls and even the girls would be like, like I can remember I had these two girlfriends that I would play with and like on like recess. My, okay, my one friend that I was friends with like elementary, junior high, high school and all that kind of stuff. Like she always had like a girl, like a group of girlfriends, like two or three other girls that she would kind of like hang out with too. So like I sometimes didn't do things with her. Like we were friends cause we were next to each other in class a lot and stuff. But like, and she was always very protective of me. But like she had other friends too. And so like through the years, she and I weren't like, hip, you know, hooked at the hip kind of thing. Like she had other people that she did stuff with, you know, and I don't blame her for that anyway. But I can remember I was friends with these two girls and these aren't the two girls that I was talking about going into sixth grade or in sixth grade. These are two completely different girls. This is more like elementary school, like second through fourth grade, I would say, that I was friends with. And I would hang out with them on the, um, the playground during recess because I didn't want to hang out with the boys and play sports and stuff. And I was just, at, recess was terrifying to me. I didn't want to go to recess. I hated it. Um, you know, the first couple years when I would swing and stuff like that, I didn't mind it. But like, going out to recess was not something I liked to do. I just didn't. I liked being in the safety of a classroom or reading a book in the library or something like that. I didn't want to have to deal with that, being up by myself, you know, unsupervised like that. Because teachers didn't really want to be bothered on recess anyway. So if they saw something going on, they didn't really want to, I mean, you know. But I can remember, you know, playing with these two girls and we would like be swinging and stuff. And I remember we used to hang from the bars upside down. Um, like, you know, by our legs, and we would hang, and we would sing that Diana Ross song, Upside Down, You're Turning Me, You're Giving Me, Instinctively, or whatever that song is, you know that song by Diana Ross, I used to love that song, but anyway, um, but I can remember, like, they were nice, I mean, we were friendly, but they would even say to me, like, why don't you hang out with the boys, like, you're a boy, you should be hanging out with the boys, and I just would kind of look at them, I remember, Cause like I didn't want to talk about it and I was scared and I was sad. So I would just kind of like look at them, you know, and be like, I wouldn't say anything, but they would make me feel a certain way about myself. Like that I wasn't good enough or, you know, that they would make me feel like they didn't want me there. I don't know. It was sad, you know, it's a lonely time. Junior high was a hundred times worse, like I've said, but like that was a lonely time for me, elementary school, you know? Like, I kind of felt like nobody really wanted to be around me. I had some teachers that, I mean, I talk about my teacher that I had in fifth grade that was just like nasty and rude and mean, but I did have some teachers that were very good too. I had a fourth grade teacher that like read to us and she was protective. My kindergarten teacher was fantastic. I can't believe I even remember her, but because it was kindergarten, right? But I do, I mean, I don't remember everything, but I remember little bits and pieces of it. And um, I had a third grade teacher that was a man and he was really, really nice. And, um, but my fifth grade teacher was horrible. My second grade teacher, I remember her, she was okay. I don't, isn't it weird that I remember all of this from elementary school, I don't know how. I remember each and every one of their names and stuff.
fifth grade was when the kids were really mean, and on top of that, I had a teacher that was absolutely horrible, and I remember her, too. My mom, like, went off on her one day, because I got caught talking in class. She always caught me talking in class. It didn't matter who was talking in class, but it was always me that got in trouble for it. And she would make us like pick a piece of gum on the wall outside and then you had to put your nose up, not like in the gum, but like up against the gum or whatever, you know, like, but you couldn't like just stand. She's like, pick a piece of gum on the wall and that's where you're going to stand. You know, she'd have to like stand like this and stuff. And I just, anyway, with like our nose against the wall and my mom came up there and she was, she was dropping something off or something and she saw me standing up against that wall. She was like, what are you doing? And I was like this was during recess and I was like I'm standing up against the wall because that's where I was told you know she went off on the teacher and was like I don't know where you learned about education but this is not what you do to children she was so mad I think that's why I came home and you know like I loved falling into TV shows, movies, and books because those were safe places for me, you know, that I could escape into. And I didn't have to, like... I remember watching The NeverEnding Story for the first time, and I so related to that kid, like, hiding out and reading that book. I was like, I so relate to this. Like, that is... I, I, I just want to hide out. Like, I don't want to, like, have to interact with anybody. Like, that's so sad, you know, that I thought that at that age. Anyway, enough sadness for one night. I'm gonna get off here and I will be back in a little while after I eat my pasta and stuff. <laughs> Bye. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> it's been like about two and a half hours. I was like trying to like add it up. My, I was like, how long has it been? I like Tanya laughs at me all the time. She's like, you truly do like count on your. I do, you guys. I am so bad at math. I really am. Like, I mean, I'm not that bad. Like, I, can, I mean, if I had to do it in my head, I could not just like how many hours, but like if I had to do some complicated math in my head, I could, you know, do it and add it up. But I really am not that great at math. But anyway, I went home and I had some of the pasta. I, I just chowed down. I had the pasta that Alex made me left over. I just had pasta with like butter and salt on it. And then he, and then my friend made chocolate chip cookies. I gave Alex one and I had another one and then there's one left. And then I had some street corn dip and a little bit of the hummus. I didn't really have much of those two things though. And then this popcorn that I've been eating that boom chicka pow popcorn or whatever. It's a strawberry uh, Greek yogurt covered popcorn. It's really good actually. It is hot in here. Um, you guys, I am so tired. So I'm not gonna vlog for a real long time, but I wanted to come back out here and vlog a little bit more. I actually, um, so I have like bought every kind of LaCroix that there is now. And I got this one and it's called like Cran, it's like Cranberry, I think. Raz Cranberry, Raspberry Cranberry, I guess. So let's gonna try this. I just wanna say this because I got this question tonight on it because I said I'm obsessed with it, you know? Because I'm obsessed with the LaCroix. And somebody was like, okay, I've heard like really different opinions about this and a lot of influencers, <laughs> influencers, I'm nobody's influencer, but a lot of YouTubers like, like LaCroix and all this kind of stuff. And they're like, is it really that good? Okay, it is definitely, I would say, an acquired taste. And the thing is, if you don't like sparkling water, you're not gonna like LaCroix. You're just not, right? But I do think that like, limoncello is the limoncello because it's it is honestly a lot of people in the comment section said the coconut was really good i like the coconut too the coconut and the limoncello are both my favorites and it's probably an equal tie um i have like three cases of the limoncello i have like two cases of the lemon two and a half cases probably of the limoncello in the refrigerator right now because i take all the cans out and alex does too and then we line them up and stuff i have a bunch of diet coke in there too but anyway the limoncello and the coconut are good. The, the pear is really, really good. Um, they're just really refreshing. I don't know how to explain it. Like, you know, I had my first, like, I really enjoy, I wouldn't, it wasn't my first one that I had. I really had my first enjoyable experience with LaCroix at the pool when Sarah brought me the limoncello. 
And you know, like I cracked it open and I was sitting in the pool and I was drinking it while I was in the pool. And maybe it was the whole mood of it or something like that. I don't know. But I like them now. Um, it, you know, like soda seems kind of heavy to me. And I drink so much water anyway that when I want something that's not soda but isn't just water, you know, um, that's what I go to. So... I like them, but yeah, it is definitely an acquired taste. And some of them, I, I don't ever like, they, all of them taste very similar to me. Um, but I don't ever crack one and I'm like, ooh, I don't like that. I mean, they're all just kind of like fruity seltzer water is what they taste like. Do you remember those? I used to love these back in the day. They came in little bottles and they were called like New York seltzer or something like that water. And they had a root beer one that I really, really liked. But anyway, let's try this Raz Cranberry one and see how this is. I'll smell it first and tell you. It has a very cranberry smell to it. It's good. It tastes like cranberry. Yeah, it's very good. I think some of them that have like a little bit of a stronger taste, I like better too. Yeah, it's pretty good. The ones that, like, I have had that I'm just like, wow, I really like those are the limoncello, the coconut, and the pear. Those were, like, three, and I couldn't find the, the pear the last time, but they had tons of coconut. They actually had, like, four cases of the limoncello, and I bought three of them, I think. No, 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 They had, like, five of them, and I bought, did I, like, just, I think I just bought two. I bought one for me and one for Sarah, because I already had a lot in the refrigerator, I think. I can't remember how many I bought. I don't know. But anyway, I sat down and ate... And I watched six, seven, eight. I watched three episodes of no. Yeah, I watched seven, eight, and nine. I watched three episodes because I have 10, 11, 12, 13. I watched three episodes of um, The Good Place. And I'm done buying them because the first eight I had to buy, which was expensive. Because they were $2.99 each. Well, it was like SD was like $1.99 and HD was $2.99. I just bought the, two, the HD one. Um, I didn't know really what the difference would be. but So, it was $3 an episode. So, it was $24 for me to watch. And that seems so ridiculous to me when I have all those services, you know. But I really wanted to see what happens. I wanted to finish it. And I, I didn't want to wait until November when it comes on Netflix. So, um, I'm already crying. It's kind of near the end. There's four episodes left. I was talking about it, or I was reading my comments in my vlog. You know what? There was a comment that I wanted to respond to. Now I can't remember what it was. Somebody asked me a question. I don't remember what the question was. Somebody was like, could you talk about such and such? No, I don't remember what it was that somebody asked me to talk about. But anyway, oh my gosh. I'm gonna watch, when I get home, I'm gonna watch this and then go to bed, I'm so tired. I was gonna listen to an hour of my audiobook tonight because I'm trying to listen to it an hour every week or every night of this week so I can finish it by Sunday, but I just can't, I'm too tired. Like, I can sit there and kind of phase out while I watch TV. I also wanted to like finish Frank, uh, Grace and Frankie which I'll work on next. And I wanted to, I thought I would maybe see what I thought of Love, Victor. And then the show that Alex started watching, someone said was uh, Lovecraft County. And they said it was directed by Jordan Peele, who did Us. And um, oh, what's the other movie? He is a fantastic director. And um, oh, what's the movie called where the guy goes home with his girlfriend for the weekend? It's so good. It's so bizarre. So anyway, Jordan Peele uh, directed it. And if he directed it, I want to watch it because he is fantastic. I think that's on HBO Max or HBO. So I'm going to watch that too. So I've got a couple shows. I want to watch Ozark still. Um, I've like gotten, I've like really kind of fallen into really enjoying watching some TV shows. And it's actually been really nice. It's really relaxing. Alex is watching Riverdale right now. That's what he was watching tonight. So he's like going back because he's kind of like trying to finish that. And, um, where is that coming from? 
So there's construction going on around here. Oh my gosh. He's trying to watch Riverdale and then that new show. He'll watch three or four shows at the same time. And then like one day if he gets real into a show, he'll just like walk it, watch it straight through. He loved that younger. He watched, I mean like he just watched that thing like every, like six or seven seasons. I think it was six seasons like straight through. He loved it. I thought about going back and watching Riverdale. I think I watched it through like the, the middle of the second season. I didn't love it. I, I liked it at the beginning. I was talking to Tanya tonight because she's like, oh, she was like, it's so, because I was telling, she was like, what's Alex watching right now? And I said, Riverdale. And she said that Eric, her husband, just started watching The Order. And she's like, he loves all of those like, younger like paranormal tv shows and stuff like that i'm like well they're good you know it's like people that read like then uh you know like the world building stuff that's like um young adult books like they're really good some of them you know i think sometimes the world building stuff for young adults is better than for adults like you know what i wanted to read those pierce brown books i think that's what his name is i can't remember what they're called um but I've heard a lot of people say they're really, really good. So I have like the first one on Audible and I was going to listen to it, but it's like 18 hours. I have all these books that I want to listen to that I haven't even like start. I need to like pull it together when it comes to reading. I want to be real frustrated with myself come the end of this year. If I, I have to at least finish my, like I have to have this year be like the most I've ever read. And the most I've ever read in the last five years is 67 books. So I have to at least beat that. And I'm at 50 right now. So that means 17 more books for the end of the year. That's not hard to do. But to get to that 100, I don't know if that's going to be able, if I'm able to be able to do that. I'm going to have to start listening to some real short books or start reading some real short books, you know. Instead of picking these long ones. <laughs> oh my gosh. September, October, November, December to finish 50 books. That's like, it's <laughs> like 14 books a month or something. <laughs> There's no way. There is literally no way it's going to happen. I think the most I did, like in my heaviest months during COVID was like eight or nine and I was getting way ahead. So to read 14 books in a month, I mean, I guess I could. I was thinking like, read the witch's sister books and then i have all of these books that are like those like teenager books you know from back in the day that always have like a girl in the front of it and she's like ah and it's called like sleep away killer or something they're like you know the the face in the milk carton like those kind of books i have a bunch of those like i bought like the crap out of those that like you can find them at goodwills and uh thrift stores and so like <laughs> i would go in there into goodwill and if they had six of them i bought six of them I, I swear to god i probably have 20 or 30 of them if not more and um i was like well i could just start reading those because all of them are like 110 pages they're really good too they're like the lois duncan books you know the one she wrote um I think she wrote, uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer, and she wrote a couple others that they turned into movies. One was like Killing Mr. Griffin, but they called it something else. Killing Mrs. Tingle, I think is what they ended up calling it. Did the camera just slide? It did. Did it? Did it just slide? It never does that. That's weird. Tanya was messing with my Jeep thing. So I have this thing underneath here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like this thing that says Jeep on it. But it's like melted and so it's like warped like this. And Tanya was like trying to like flatten it. I go, girl, I go, it's melted. That's why it did that. Don't worry about it. It's always up there in the sun. And she was messing with it. And I think that's, it was like kind of like not glued in place, but it was kind of like it wouldn't really move. <laughs> and I think like she messed with it so Tanya Jean you better not be messing with my camera stuff I'm gonna get her <laughs> we had such a great time at our um, meeting tonight I do want to go to bed early tonight too because I want to go to the pool tomorrow if it's nice I would like to go to the pool as many days as I can uh, I have a feeling our pool I looked on I looked tonight to see if we had an email and we didn't have an email because Tanya said some pools are staying open past Labor Day our pool usually stays open until it's cold like if it like is nice through September they'll keep it open through September right but I have a feeling this year because of the rules like the opening of it was per the city rule so if the city rule says that pools have to be closed Labor Day 
which is the rule, I have a feeling they'll be closing it up right on Labor Day. So, I'm trying to get as many days in swimming as I can between now and next week. I'm gonna pull in here. Should I pull in here? Should I pull in? I was gonna pull into the mire, but the mire's close. It doesn't matter where I go, I guess. I'm gonna pull into this parking lot here. The post office. I feel like I had something I needed to mail. Did I have something I needed to mail? No, I think I mailed it already. My HOA fees. Plus the other thing with the LaCroix is that I don't drink as much caffeine that way too. Okay. It's cold now. Lock my door so nobody comes up and gets me. <laughs> Cause you know I get scared about that stuff. Um, okay, hold on a second. Dream. Dream, dream, dream. What do I meant to do? Da da da. You ever read something and you're like so confused you're like I don't what I don't understand what I'm reading <laughs> welcome to the story of my life okay all right whenever I want you all I have to do is dream I have been listening to the 50s Five, pop five, fifties on five for the last couple days and I'm living for it. I love it. Oh, I need to charge my phone. That's what I need to do. Okay. Vlog central. Oh my Lord. Vlog got a lot of views on it. That's crazy. Okay. Where was the comment that I wanted to read? Oh my God, Christy said, Climax was the first concert I ever went to. I was in seventh grade and I went with a friend who invited me. Meeting in the ladies room was a favorite back then. I love that song so much. Maricela and Crystal both liked it. No, it was John and Maricela both liked it that I sang Dream or talked about Dreamweaver. Um... Okay, Nikki ruined it for me. She said, the ending of A Good Place makes me sob like a baby. So now I'm like, oh my God, what happens in the ending? I hope it's something happen happy. Um, Madikin said, Peter, you were too much in this vlog when you got excited because it was your turn to go. And when you said you didn't even wear a lip balm because your lips would get zapped. So funny, thanks for the laugh. Um... Okay. Diaz Morelda said, thanks for showing the pool. If you go back to last summer, I don't know when it is, but uh, there probably is a thumbnail that shows it. I actually did a vlog where I was in the pool and I was doing handstands and stuff. I might try to do that like once before the summer is over because I did it last year. That would be kind of fun to do. Okay. 
I did go off the diving board at Tanya's pool. Did I tell you that? Okay, so we were literally, I think I said this, we were literally the only ones there, and I was like, there's always kids running off the diving board because there's like a diving pit area, you know? And I was like, I want to go off the diving board. I haven't gone off the diving board in forever. And I was like, you only live once. And I told Tanya, I was like, I don't want to hurt myself worse, but like I really want to go off the diving board. And she was, I can't remember what she said, something funny. She was like, well, uh, she's like, we're going to have to call you in for workers' comp or something. I can't remember what she said, but anyway, she said a couple, she said a couple things. She did say she was impressed with my diving skills, though. Uh, I mean, I grew up, like, just playing by myself, you know, in a pool. So, like, at my dad's house, I would just do dive after dive after dive. I could do back dives. I could do handstands off of the diving board and everything. But anyway, okay, the battery died, and I had to change it right in the middle of me talking about my diving board experience. Okay, so anyway, um, I got up on the diving board. Oh, I was talking about how I uh, used to, I grew up doing all these dives and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, I did. Um, I kind of wanted to be a diver in high school, but I don't know. Like, the idea of team sports always kind of scared me when I was, like, in high school. I played tennis. Um, I think it was my ninth grade year was the last year that I played. But, like, I just... People were not nice to me, you know what I mean? And especially playing a sport where I would have to be in a locker room afterwards, you know, like change and all that kind of stuff. I just was like, that really scared me. Um, but I was always a good swimmer and a good diver, and I always wanted to do that. So anyway, um, but anyway, so I got up on the diving board, and I was like, I'm doing this. And I did, actually, I did two dives, so... I had fun, though. I'm glad I did it. did it. I don't regret it. Now, if I can't get out of bed tomorrow morning because of the diving board, I'm going to regret it. Okay. Brooke said, Peter, this is ASMR. Oh, everybody left so many um, col colored emojis, which means that they made it to the end of the video, which really makes me happy. Um, Kathy said the dream catcher part was pri uh, part is priceless. I know someone who collects them too. You made my night, Peter. I want to be one of your gajitis. Well, then we're gajitis. I needed a laugh tonight for sure. Um, okay. And then she said the epidural numbs the pain. My sister had that. She has like five herniated discs. I've heard it works for some people and it doesn't work for other people. It's kind of a last ditch effort after... Uh, I'm just real happy that they're not talking about surgery right now because that was kind of my fear, honestly. Chelsea said, I'm putting out good vibes for you. Thank you, Chelsea. Um, uh, Jen talks books and creates. Uh, she said, 518th like. How do you guys know what number of like it is? Can you Do you know when you look? See, here Tony said, cortisone shot, best thing I ever did. You know what? My mom, when she had alopecia, she'd have cortisone shots in her scalp, you guys, like right in the top of her head. She said it was the most painful thing she'd ever been through in her entire life. She was like, it was so unbelievably painful. And um, that was when my mom, like, it wasn't working, and she'd had, she'd had like two of them. And my mom had... Um, Alopecia, you can get it either male pattern baldness in women or you can get stress related alopecia and he couldn't tell which one it was. So anyway, um, but she would just lose clumps of her hair. It was the saddest thing ever. My mom had the most beautiful hair. And um, <clears throat> so at, he went, he told her, he said, she had lost like almost all of her hair at that point. And he said, I think that you need to go the route of like wigs. And this is before like the lace fronts and the comfortable wigs and all this kind of stuff, you know? This is when it was just like really like the wigs were not comfortable and all this kind of stuff. And there was a wig shop downstairs for like people that were like going through chemo and, you know, like had hair dermatological issues and things like that and alopecia like my mom so she went down and she tried on this wig and it was like one of those old school Ava Gabor wigs and my mom looked in the mirror and she just started crying and she said it was real itchy and uncomfortable and she went home and she kind of thought about it she was super conscious of her hair she wore hats a lot like big hats and scarves and stuff to kind of like take away the attention from it and at that point she just was like screw it I'm done with the shots I'm done with the hat I'm done with the scarves and she like her hair at that point was kind of like like real sh like sh not like boy short but it was short and she just had it like cut and then there's a lot of missing pieces and in a year like over the period of the next year her hair started growing back like grew back and it grew back like a hundred times like healthier than it ever 
never had been before. And she really believed that it was her kind of just like letting go and letting God and just being like, I'm not fighting this anymore. Like if I'm going to lose all my hair, I'm going to lose all my hair. And she just was kind of done fighting it. And <clears throat> It was a year before my cousin's wedding. It was a year before we both got sober. Because at my um, cousin's wedding, I have a really cute picture of my mom framed. I have it at my house. And it was from Caroline's rehearsal dinner. And she's got this really cute dress. Um, she got her rehearsal dinner dress and she got her wedding dress, the dress for the wedding, both from uh, Banana Republic, I can remember. She went there and then she had this big broad hat. And the reason why I remember the straw hat that my mom wore to Caroline's wedding, my mom really loved the idea of wearing hats to weddings like they do, you know, in England for like royalty and stuff. So she had this really cute hat. It was big. Well, she read uh, the part from Corinthians about love and Caroline's wedder, we wedding, and when she would go down, it, the, it, it would hit the microphone, and people were, like, laughing. I, you know, I have not heard, like, I'm going to get real emotional probably saying this, but I haven't heard my mom talk. Like, I haven't listened to an answering, I don't have any answering machine message tapes of hers, because she wanted me to record her answer machine message because she didn't want people to know that she lived alone. So she was like, then they'll call and they'll think there's a man here. So I don't have any answer machine recordings of her. I don't have any tapes of her talking. I have this tape of me like learning how to ride the bike when I, I ride a, a bike when I was real little. My mom and dad were teaching me and my mom's in the background going, pedal Peter, pedal, pedal, pedal Peter. And I'm like, okay, mom, okay, mom, stop, stop, you're driving me crazy, mom. And, um, but she sounds different in the tape than she did, like, in real life. Caroline gave me a v uh, VCR, a videotape of my mom at her wedding. And Caroline gave that tape to me, like, three years ago, and I still have not listened to it. Or watched it. It's not, like, intentional, you know? Like, it's weird. I don't know, or maybe it is, you know? Like, I don't know. Maybe I don't want to hear it, or maybe I'm scared to hear it or something. Why is this car going so slow? That is that same van that was here the other night. Oh, my God, they just stopped like they were going to turn in here. <gasps> You guys, this was that old couple that was here the other night. Are they pulling in here again? Oh, I'm gonna take off like nobody's business if they turn in here. They're not turning in here, they can't be. <gasps> oh my God, they're coming down here. And they're going really slow, you guys. Why are they going so slow? I want to see if it's the same couple. That is the exact same van, you guys, look. They're turning around again. What are they doing? I got a question in my Q&A the other day that I did. They're like, do you ever see anything weird? Yeah, like this is an example. How about that uh, cooler that was in the middle of the road that I thought had a head in it? What are they doing over there? There's like a mail slot over there. Like a... a now they're backing up. What are they doing? There's like a mail, um, what do you call it? A mailbox where you can put like your mail into at night. But they went past it and now they just backed up past it. And then they just like shot past it a little bit. What are they doing? I'm like, this is freaking me out. They're like past the mailbox and they're just sitting there. Like they didn't slow down to put mail in it or anything. They just went past it and now they're just sitting past it.
like true story here I'll show you you can see can you see them moving in the oh they're, they're moving oh my god they're coming this way oh no they're going the sec the around the other route why didn't they just go out This is like so creepy, you guys. Oh my God, what are they doing? They're parking. I feel like I can't leave now. What are they doing? I so wanna drive by and see what they're doing. You can see the van perfectly from here. I'm gonna see if you guys can see in the rear view mirror. Can you see it from the rear view mirror? You can't, but they're like, like literally I can see they're like parked right there. But I'm like worried that like, what if somebody like rushes up? It looked like somebody just got out of the passenger side door. What are they doing in there? They're doing something weird. They're like... It looked like they flicked a lighter, but then it looked like a flashlight. Like a pen light. You guys, you can see over here too in my rear view mirror. Can you see in that one over there? You can see that they're parked over there. What is going on? I know most of you are like, you should leave, but I'm like, mm-mm. I got a true crime book club. I'm waiting right here. Where's my lip balm? This is the kind of stuff that back in the day, <clears throat> true story, Tanya and I. So when Nick was younger, you know, she'd make dinner and do his homework with him and stuff like that. And then she'd get him into bed after like doing a bath and whatever. This is like when he was in elementary school, you know? And she get him into like a bath and stuff like that. I don't really know when the fountain pop thing started, but we would go then sometimes, not just to get a fountain pop, but just to like drive around or whatever, you know? We'd sit on her back patio, but sometimes when we would drive around, she, we'd have to go, re, you know, return movies or we'd get a movie from like the Blockbuster and we'd watch it there or whatever at her house. This car, something's up with this car. Okay, if something happens to me, my, they discover my camera, or my, they discover, yeah, okay, is my camera out of, oh, don't do this, come on. If something happens to me and they discover my camera, but I'm missing, like on Unsolved Mysteries, it's like, I would guess, I'm horrible with years of cars, I guess an early 2000s, white, van you know obviously it has you know, windows on the passenger side and the driver's side door then behind it it has like a door that like opens like this and two wind two windows that are like two feet by two feet and then in the back it has a, a like a like a larger window where it looks like people can kind of sit back there and stuff this is so bizarre. I wonder what they're doing. I still wanna just drive over there by them, but I don't think that's probably a smart move. How long have they been doing this now? Is this battery dying too? Oh my God. It's on the halfway. I must have brought like, I thought that battery was fully charged. So I now have a process with this bag. 
This is where my wallet is, but my used batteries go in here and my new batteries go in here. So I think I have one more battery in here. I do, maybe this is the fully charged one. We don't need it just yet. What are they doing? If I pull out there and I go down the road, I'll be able to see what they're doing. Oh, you know what I can do? <gasps> I can go like I'm putting, I can go like I'm putting <clears throat> an envelope in the mailbox and then I'll have to drive by them. That's what we're gonna do. And then I'm gonna go down and then I'm gonna come back. <clears throat> I'm gonna turn you guys towards where the van will be, but they have their brights on, I think, or their lights. Oh, they're right by the mailbox, so oh, shit. Oh, excuse me, family friendly. They're literally right in front of the mailbox. I can't do it. Damn it. Why are they there? Oh, they're leaving. Oh my God, they're leaving. Look, you guys. I wanna get a side picture of this van so you guys can see it when I leave. They pulled out, but they're not really leaving. They're just sitting there. Look, you guys, this is so creepy. There, they're leaving. You can see it. There's the van. They're not following me, are they? They're not, they're not following me. What are they doing? They just went around to the front of the post office now. Well, maybe they were waiting for me to leave. They just went back and parked at the exact same place that they were parked before. You guys, that is so weird. What is going on? Something is going on at the post office. It's a good thing that I have a true crime book club. But anyway, Tanya and I, we would go driving. And uh, like as Eric, you know, would be like sitting down in the living room and he'd be watching TV or something. So, you know, Nick would be asleep for school the next day. And so we'd be like, okay, we're gonna, you know, go get a fountain pop or a coffee or something. Like, I feel like we drank a lot of coffee back then. But anyway, so, this is like literally, you know, like, Tanya and I were friends at like year two or something like that. So this is like our first, you know, five to 10 years sober. And we would go drive around and we would like always run into the craziest stuff that was going on. Like always crazy stuff. And Tanya would be like, something's going on here. Like follow this person, like this, th this isn't right or whatever. And I cannot tell you how many times, like, people would get pulled over by the police and Tanya, <laughs> Tanya would be like, there'd be like six police cars and Tanya would be like, pull up. She's like, pull over. I know those guys. I'm like, no, Tanya, I'm not pulling up. She'd be like, I know these guys. And so she'd get out and she'd be like, Hey, you guys, it's Tanya. I own Cheney Creek Kennel. Cause she, uh, what do you call it? She, um, Oh, boarded like a lot of the canine cops or canine dogs, you know, the cops, the dog police officer. She did that for a long time. So uh, I think she still does some of them. And so she was like, do you guys need some help or anything? <laughs> I'd be like, oh my God, Tanya. And they're like, no, we don't need any help. Thanks a lot, Tanya. I'm like, oh my God. This was the construction the way I came before. I'm kind of like just doing like an up and down. That freaked me out. I do believe something was going on there though, but I just don't know what. <laughs> I'm silly, aren't I? I'm always looking for a mystery or an adventure somewhere. Sleep so 
so well tonight. I haven't been vlogging for an hour. There's no way. How long have I been vlogging now? 20 minutes. And I don't know how long I've vlogged before. Well, I'll go up here and turn around and then I'll end the vlog. I don't have a whole lot to talk about tonight anyway. I haven't just like driven around and told stories for a while. I guess I did tell kind of stories earlier talking about like food and things like that. My favorite, my favorite topic is food and true crime. <laughs> it's a true story though. So I ordered Alex. Did I say this already? Well, I shouldn't probably say, but I ordered him two special things for our anniversary next week. We don't do like big anniversary gifts. There is somebody walking at 146 at night right there in this trail by the woods. Tanya Jean walked me, okay, there was this trail that goes through the woods right here. She walked me through there one night. It was like late fall, early winter, and she walked me through there, and I was terrified. I was like, don't you ever do that to me again. I was so scared. We like can't, it takes forever to come out on the other side. And she was like, were you scared? Were you scared? I said, yes, I was scared. There's no reason for that. Serial killers could have been hiding in there. She goes, you're so silly. I go, Tanya, serial killers exist. You do realize that, don't you? She's like, yeah, I watch Nancy Grace and Dateline and all that too. I said, Tanya, you think you're funny. I said, but I'm telling you right now, serial killer probably could have been waiting in there for us. Saw us walking down the road, parked, went in the woods and knew that we were coming through there and waited to kill us. Slit our throats or shot us. I said, you're silly. I said, you, you think that you're above it, it's never gonna happen to you. I know we are either gonna end up on an episode, uh, 48 hours or unsolved mysteries. I just know it is that we gonna go up missing at the Walmart. I know that's gonna, we don't go to the Walmart anymore. We never go to the Walmart anymore. They don't even, none of those stores are even open this late anymore. Is the Meyer open this late anymore in the Walmart? I feel like everything closes at midnight anymore, right? I think I was talking about my fear the other day of like, oh my God, this battery is dying. Are you kidding me? I wasn't even gonna vlog a whole lot more. Well, I'll pull in here anyway. But I was talking about my fear the other night. I hope I get the right battery. Yeah, because my used one's with my wallet. But of sitting outside when I heard the second shotgun. Let me tell you what, what my fear is, okay? Because I've had this fear before where I hear something like that go off. And what I think it is, well, first of all, you can kind of hear this main road by us, so it's probably just a car backfiring. But what I think it is, is I imagine this guy walking down the street, you know, like some guy that's like lost his mind crazy and he's got like one side of his like button down collared shirt hanging out of his khakis, you know? Like he's lost his mind at work or something like that. You've seen those movies, you know what I'm talking about? And he's walking down the street with one of those, like those kind of shotgun kind of deals and he's just shooting at people randomly. Like that's my fear, see? Like, and, I, and so when I was sitting outside and I heard that sound, I was like, uh-uh. This is why I probably shouldn't be reading all this true crime stuff. I, I true story, I, I think it just feeds my imagination and makes things worse. I do start getting like just real scared and freaky and freaked out and stuff. I probably shouldn't do that. I'm gonna pull through this Arby's real quick and see if there's anything new that they have here for me to review. It says right here, beer battered fish sandwich, but nobody needs that, it's gross. Okay. Um, Orange cream shake, floats, I did all that. They don't have anything new. Bunch of junk. <laughs> I do love their potato cakes so, so much. Their potato cakes rule. We go down here. I haven't been to a Dollar Tree or a Dollar General and I don't even know how long. I just know my battery's gonna die any second. I can't believe we can actually see it this time. Okay. I'm just gonna put the bat. I'm just gonna, uh, I should just say goodnight is what I should do. Ain't that some crap? <laughs> right while I was in the middle of my vlog saying what I should do, it stopped on me and went beep, 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 beep. I hate that when that happens. All right, well this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start ending the vlog, <laughs> cause it'll probably take me till I get there. And then I'm gonna go back to the post office 
and we're gonna wrap it up seeing what's going on because I do think that there's something I think there's some scandals and deceptions of the world happening at the post office right now I, I'm the most positive of it I think maybe I should probably make a citizen's arrest don't you think <laughs> Can you imagine me pulling up there? I'm uh, hello. I'm Peter Mon. I'm a YouTuber, and I'm making a citizen's arrest for what? I don't know, but something. You're doing something that's not right. Okay, y'all are doing something sinly. I can tell it. Anyway, I hope you guys. Well, I haven't got to that part yet. If you have made it this far in this video and in this vlog, and you, well, hold on. Uh, thank you for watching tonight. I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, I love this channel. It's so fun for me and um, just to do whatever and talk about the weirdest stuff like post office bandits and uh, you know, whatever. Mysteries of the world and meatloaf and taco Tuesday night. All that kind of stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you made it this far in the video vlog and you really liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. It would mean the world to me. And I uh, had a lot of people that watched yesterday because they wanted to know my test results. So thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And um, please make sure that you're still subscribed to my channel. And if you haven't subscribed already, please think about it. I would really appreciate it. And please make sure that you're still subscribed to all of my channels because people are getting unsubscribed to my channels left and right. Um, and of course, I'm trying to work with my YouTube manager again on that. We'll see what'll happen. And uh, the creator people, who they have to work with, I guess, and these engineers and IT specialists. They fixed it last time, so maybe they'll fix it again. I don't know. And um, let's see what else. And please leave a comment in the comment section below if you want to. And uh, if you'd like to just leave a color, I've been doing the color emojis. And if you made it this far, I think that we should put all, I'm gonna do red again, all red emojis, cause I like red. Red's a good color, I like, I think it's fun. And I can see the red light ahead of me. So all red emojis in the comment section below. And I hope you guys are having an amazing Wednesday. It's already halfway through the week, can you believe it? Guys, weeks are just flying by. I hope you're having an amazing Wednesday, unless you have other plans. But like I always say, don't have other plans. Make the most of your day. Do something fun today, do something exciting. Uh, do something that will, you know, make you happy today. That's important. And do something that is also contrib positively contributing to the world around you. In any way. It can be anything small, you know. It can be picking up, you know, some trash and throwing it away. Anything. Or by not littering. That positively contributes to the world. And also do something that will make yourself proud when you look back on it. Whenever that is. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Make sure that you look in the yourself. Make sure that you look at yourself in the mirror every single day. And you tell, tell your every single day and every single night. Make sure that you look at yourself in the mirror every single day and every single night, and you tell yourself, "I love you," and at least one positive affirmation, like you are valuable. And every night before you go to bed, say this about the next day, about tomorrow, the next day, and every day when you get up, say, "Today is going to be an amazing day. I'm going to be happy, joyous, and free all day today. I can. I'm going to sing. I'm going to dance. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to cry if I want to. I'm going to live my most authentic, genuine life today and be true to myself." And what I want to do and what I want to be, I want to live my spirit and my soul and uh, stay weird and be too much. And uh, if I have to work, I'm going to do so with a smile on my face and um, do the best work that I possibly can by putting a positive contribution out there in the world. And if I don't have to work, then I'm going to do time. Or if I do, I'll do it afterwards, doing things that I love doing time. I'm going to do the things I love to do, like, you know, gardening or cleaning, maybe. I like to clean sometimes. Or cooking, or you know, canning fruits and vegetables, or coloring in your coloring books, or crocheting. <gasps> or my friend ordered a uh, poncho from uh, Mel, and it is gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. I got to see it. So anyway, I pictures of it, but she was showing us all these pictures of it that she took. And she said she has spins and spins and spins and she feels like Stevie Nicks in it. So anyway, um, but continue to say to yourself those sayings and you know, whatever makes you happy, like crocheting, because Mel loves to crochet, I love to read. I had to stop myself. I started telling a story about a friend that didn't need to be told. But anyway, okay. You know, like I like to read. <laughs> we all have things that we like to do, right? Okay, so do those things each and every day. And also and tell yourself that. And also say to yourself, um, 
and I'm gonna have great opportunities come my way all day today and I'm gonna have positive experiences all day long as well. And uh, what's next? Also, make sure to reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. It doesn't matter who it is. Just offer some support to somebody. Offer some love if you want to. Just offer some kindness. Just even kind words. Like, hey, I was thinking of you. How are you doing? I love when people tweet or tweet me. I love when I like that too. But I love when people just send me random text messages and are like, hey, I was thinking of you. How are you doing? Or, you know, I saw this and this reminded me of you. That always makes me so happy. I have like a handful of people that are like that. And, um, you know, I don't know. It's just is like, it's cool to know that somebody's thinking of me. And uh, also, like I always say, practice random acts of kindness. But also, like I always say, don't tell anyone. That's the most important part. Just do it because it's a nice thing to do. It's the right thing to do. It's uh, putting goodness and kindness and love and compassion out there in the world to make the world a better place. And maybe that sounds corny or idealistic, but I believe that we are doing that. We're putting more goodness and kindness and love and compassion out there in the world than it exists, you know? And I think that's it. But I am gonna roll through the post office to see what's going on with our uh, friend, the old van. Don't think I'm not, okay? Because this has become an adventure. And last time I didn't look in that, uh, that cooler to find out if there was a head from that movie Seven in there. But if I could redo that night over again, I still wouldn't look in that cooler. I'm not stupid. I'd run and kick it. I would though. I'd run and kick that. But then I'd be scared that maybe, you know, like it would explode on me or something. <laughs> there was a stick of dynamite or something. But I would, I would maybe like run and kick it and then back. You know what I mean? Like one of the, I think about this stuff. Do you guys think about that stuff? When you as a mind as imaginative as me and you grew up as an only child, you think about that stuff. I'd run up on that cooler, because you don't know, maybe it was a cooler full of snakes too. And then when you kicked it, they'd all come like at you, right? So I'd run up and kick it and back like that. That's what i do. But I wouldn't like just open it and see what happened because then a big boa constrictor or something would come up and go like that and get me. And you know with those, those things on the side or a velociraptor, you know, a velociraptor could do that to me too. I do, I think about this stuff. By the way, my pinky nail went right into my jaw when I was doing that, and that kind of hurt. That van is still there. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <gasps> Somebody's getting into the driver's seat. I want to see who it is. What is she doing? <gasps> She's dropping stuff. Who says she got a bunch of stuff? I'm going to go through here again. Oh, she looked at me. I can't do it. I can't do it. Don't come for me. Don't come and get me. <laughs> She's dropping stuff out of her car. She was getting in anyway. I think there was something going on there. If I hear that there was a heist at the post, she don't think she was like stealing mail, do you? Like out of the mailbox? No. Is she leaving? Is she following me? I can see you. She's way over there, but I can see it. I wonder what's going on. Anyway, I'll never know. <laughs> it's like that movie I watched, Testament, when the little, the little boy's running, he says he's running away, he didn't make it very far, and his mom goes, where are you going? And he said, it was so sad, and he said, I'm going to meet up with dad. And she said, you are, and you're gonna leave us all behind? And he said, mm-hmm. And she said, well, what will you do when you find him? And she, he said, I can't know. <laughs> That's so sweet. Anyway, I'm done for tonight. We'll never know what happened to the van now. It's done forever. It'll be a mystery that goes off into the universe. Anyway, the never-ending story, I guess, of, uh, <laughs> The never, which I've talked about twice tonight. The never ending story of the never ending story. Na, 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 na. I actually have that song just in case you ever wanted to hear it. Um, I have the dance remix that was in Stranger Things season three last episode. Anyway, all right, you guys, I love you. And uh, like I said, if you made it to the end of the video or vlog, please put any kind of red emoji in the comment section below. And I love you guys. And uh, by the way, um, is the 100%, is the 100, is the 100%, 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 is the
in red. That's my favorite. <laughs> I love you guys. I'll see you later. Not my favorite emoji of life. No, my favorite emoji of life is either the dancing guy. Well, the blue heart is one of them. The dancing guy, or I really like the fingernail polish. I don't know why. That's just so shady, isn't it? Anyway, I love you guys, and I'll see you later. Bye. Oh my God, I didn't even say love you. I just signed off and said bye, like y'all don't matter. Anyway, I do though, I had to come back and say something at the end, so, cause you guys know I love you so much. And um, I have to sign off the correct way. So, I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow, okay? So come back tomorrow, cause I'll, same place, same time, same place. All right, I'll see you there. <laughs> I love you guys, bye. Love ya!